I'm so thankful to see you once again. Uh, I would like to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm sure that through this time, the God will bless us with His word. Today, we're going to you know, the, read the book of the Matthew, chapter 19. From verse 16 through 22. Matthew chapter 19 from verse 16 through 22. Yeah, let us read. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandment. He said to him, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have, give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Yes, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Most people think that if they do good, they will be blessed, and if they do evil, they will be cursed. There are a lot of religions in this world, and most of the religions, they follow this kind of teachings. Do you think that is true? I hope you think deeply about this topic. Do you think you know, that God will receive you when you do good and that God will curse you when you do evil? Let us suppose that there is the most good person in this world. This person is the most good person and the number one, number one good person in this world. Do you think God can say that this man you know, can come to heaven? On the other side, there is the most evil person in this world. Do you think that there is no way you know, for that person to go to heaven? Actually, God, you know that He is the merciful God. And God sent Jesus Christ in this world as a Savior. What do you think uh, you know, this Savior means? What is the role of Savior? If there is a Savior, it means that there is a one who needs a Savior. Because if there is no one you know, who needs a savior, there would be no reason for savior to exist in this world. 
icyo giye no mukiza kuba yaba mwisi nacyaba maze just like we have the interviewer and the interviewee nuko tugira umuntu uhata abandi bibazo kandi akagira uwo abihata in it, in the same way there is a savior and there is a one who need to be saved ni nako bigenda nimba ari umukiza ari no umuntu ukeneye gukizwa nawe the reason why we human beings we need a savior that jesus christ dere gituma twebwe abantu dukenera umukiza ari we yesu kristo it is because god knows that we human beings we cannot be saved by ourselves nokimana ziko twebwe abantu tutakwikiza we need somebody to save us from our sins dukeneye wadukiza ibyaha byacu for that reason jesus christ was sent to this world If there was any possibility for us to be saved from our sins on our own God would not have sent us Jesus Christ. He would have told us to live a good life. Let's think about you know the two thieves you know the who are crucified on the cross next to Jesus. In the time of Jesus, the crucifixion was the maximum sentence. Which means you know the most the severe and the most the biggest the sinner they were sentenced to this crucifixion. Buzengo munyacha urutabandi Jesus that's that's why Jesus was crucified at the cross. Why because he was given the maximum sentence. He because he called himself the son of God he was a big you know the sin ngo yisu umwana w'Imana icyo bagifashe nk'icya gikomeye kuruta ibindi What about these two thieves next to Jesus Christ? None abajura babiri bo bari mu mpande ze. I don't know what kind of sins they committed. Nago nzi bya bakoze ngo nibihe. However, what we can see is that even they committed you know the big sins. Ari cyo tushaka kumenya nuko That's why they were you know, crucified together with Jesus. Yeah, according to the eyes of people these two thieves were really you know, the big sinners and criminals. In the beginning both of them you know they were blaming Jesus. But at the last moment one you know the thief changed his heart. And this thief you know the rebuked the other the other you know the thief. And then he said that Oh Jesus please remember me. This thief, you know, he didn't do anything good, you know, that in his entire life. So result of his life was this the crucifixion, this the, the maximum sentence. Everybody could call him the biggest criminal. People must have thought that ah this man deserves to be sentenced to that crucifixion. You know, everybody called him that ah this is the evil sinner. But at that time um, he was together with Jesus Christ and at the last moment he changed his heart. And he was given this promise from Jesus Christ that you will be at the paradise with me. Yes, yes, I'm saying that What does this mean? Even though this thief he didn't do anything good, but by changing his heart at the last moment, he was able to receive the 
grace and the promise from Jesus Christ that he would be together with Jesus at the paradise. No, no, go if you have a visit, not in Kiza Nachim Yakoze, Ariko House, says Ranonayes, or a move that throughout the Kumamuri Paradiso. In which means the Bible is telling us how. This kind of dirty and filthy sinner you can be saved. Vivuzengo, Viri Vitub Giru Budjo, Avanyabja, Babi Bandu Yeva Hinda and Yeva Kachira Gachis. Today we read Matthew chapter 19. You must call some your Matavich Chuminichen. Here there is a one young man. Hano to an am Umusarum Umutuns. He asked Jesus this question What shall I do to have the eternal life? Yavajesati Nakorichi Kugirangum Habu Jingovora. Jesus had uh, replied to him that you can't uh, keep the commandment. Yes, Saram Suzati, why is a Matejiku? I'm sure that this man, you know, he lived a good life. Because if he lived the evil life or bad life, he would not have had this boldness to ask Jesus Christ such question. He, when he asked such question to Jesus Christ, he was with the confidence. Jesus, tell me what I am supposed to do to, to inherit eternal life. Yeah, since you know young, I have kept the old commandment. Yeah, he must be a good man. He must keep the old laws very well, even better than others. But problem is, even though he kept the law very well, but he still felt that he was lacking something. He must have had this kind of questions in his heart. Oh, I have kept the old commandment. I have lived the good life. But why do I have this, this feeling that I am lacking something? What do I lack to have the eternal life? He must have this kind of question mark in his heart. The reason why this man he had a question mark in him it is because he did not know the difference between the eyes of God and the eyes of man. Even in this generation, there are so many people who try their best to live a good life and to keep the law. They are considered as a saint, as a good believers. Some, you know, they may be considered as angels in this world. However, they still feel that they are lacking something. They are not sure about their salvation. They are not sure that you know, they can go to heaven. Why do you think you know, the people you know, they have this lacking in their heart? And the reason is only one, it is because you know, the, the people they do not understand the difference between the eyes of God and the eyes of man. Let us read one verse in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse. Seven. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Now, 
Here the Bible clearly says, the Lord does not see as man sees. We human beings, we look at outward appearance. That's why when we judge the people, whether he's, this man is good or bad, we judge these people uh, according to their actions. If he, this person does something good, outwardly, we call this man the good man. But if the other person you know, does something evil, we call that person evil person. Yeah, so according to what we see with our eyes, we judge the people. However, the Lord, the God, you know, sees inside of our heart. Because, you know, when we see the inside of our heart, there is the evil seed. In the Middle Ages, there are many, many, you know, the, the God believers. Even so many religious leaders. They tried their best to cut off their fleshly desires. Of course, they did not live the evil life. They did not do the evil actions like other, other people, like criminals. However, you know, they are always, uh, they are always, uh, you know, the disturbed by this evil thought and evil desires in their heart. That's why even they took the way to torture their body. They tried to give the pain to their body so that this they may not have the evil desires. However, even though they used all possible ways to cut off their evil desires, but they failed. Even they are human beings, that's why they had also evil desires. desires. Why do you think another you know, people cannot, uh, be, cannot be free from that you know, the condemnation, such you know, evil desires? No matter how hard you try to live a good life, no matter how diligently you try to keep the law, the heart that you are born with is from Satan. That is why, unless you get the perfect solution for this problem of evil seed, you are not able to get the true uh, true rest and true peace in your heart. And you are not able to overcome that power of Satan and the temptation of Satan on your own. Human limitation, human goodness has the limitation. No matter how hard you try to do good, it always is within the limit. It is impossible for you to go to heaven with human righteousness. Suppose that, you know, there is a man, you know, the, who keeps the law very well in this world. Do you know what the Bible says about that people? Actually, those who keep the law very well, you know, the, in this world, that is the Pharisees and scribes. 
know, we Gentiles, we cannot match with them. Because the most of us, we only know the Ten Commandments. But actually, Bible scholars, you know, they counted all the laws in the Bible. They found total 613 laws in the Bible. But I'm sure that you know, most of us, we even do not know what kind of laws are in the Bible. How can we keep the laws that even we do not know? But the Pharisees and scribes are they are different. As soon as they are born, you know that they are educated. And they learned what kind of laws are in the Bible and how they are supposed to follow. That's why we can say that these Pharisees and scribes, they are number one in terms of keeping the law. What does the Bible say? Let us open to the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 20. Matthew chapter 5 verse 20 we shall read Matthew chapter 5 For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the, the Pharisees you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven Haranditse ngo kandi ndababwira yuko gukiranuka kwanyu ni kutari twabanditse among the, all the righteousness of men, now the righteousness of Pharisees and scribes, it is number one. Why? Because they are very good at you know, keeping the law. You see that you know, the we Gentiles, it is impossible for our righteousness to be better than the righteousness of Pharisees and scribes. But very funny thing is, still so many people, they try to keep the law, you know, though, and try to be justified by the deeds of the law. When we read the book of Romans closely, the Apostle Paul, he already you know, state that uh, Israelites, they are not able to be justified by their, by their works and by their deeds. No flesh will be justified by the deeds of the law. This is what the Bible is telling us. With our righteousness, it is impossible you know, to be justified. That's why Bible is giving us the new way, which is the Jesus Christ. Even this young man in the book of Matthew chapter 19, he was trying to keep the law. Even he thought that, you know, that he was keeping the law very well. Probably he was expecting that, you know, that he could have the assurance of salvation. But things you know, happened uh, differently from his expectation. I tried my best to keep the law and I have kept the law you know, since my youth. How come do I not have the assurance of salvation? Why do I still lack? 
Kuchimbanung bari chomburo. What am I missing? Eseni chinakozo. Now you see that this man he had a kind of confusion in his in his heart. Yumusore rafturujo mumutima we. At that time, Jesus was giving him the answer. Jesus asked him to do something. You sell everything you have. And you give it to the poor. And you will find a treasure. Of course, it does not mean that you know that Jesus just you know want him to sell everything he has, these material things. Because God does not focus on the material issues. But what does this mean that you know that you sell everything you have and give it to the poor? Even the dear viewers, you also have many things in your heart. But if you want to believe in God, if you want to believe in Jesus Christ, you should know that your own things must be put down. All of you have your own standard. All of you have your own rightness. As long as you live with your own right thought, as long as you live with your own judgment, with your own standard, it is impossible for you to follow the guidance of God and the word of God. That's why Jesus Christ, you know, he said like this. If anyone desires to follow me, let him deny himself. You want to follow me? You first deny yourself. Oh, you want to believe in me? You first deny yourself. Now this is what Jesus Christ, he is telling you and me. When we read the book of Matthew chapter 13, there is a one, you know, the parable. There is one man who found a treasure in a field. It was not his field. But he found that treasure in a field. Now he decided to sell everything he had. Oh, this treasure is so precious. What I have is it is not comparable to the treasure that I found in the field. Uh, that treasure is more important than you know the, everything I have. So it was very easy for him to sell everything he had and bought that no field. Why? Because he discovered that treasure. In the same way, even this man, if he found the treasure, you know, that it would be very easy for him to sell everything he had and give it to the poor, just as Jesus Christ told him. But when he, when he listened to the word of Jesus Christ, he was hesitating. You know why? Because he did not want to throw away his own you know, right thought. He did not want to forsake his own you know, the judgment, his own standard. Still, he was holding himself. That, that is why, even though Jesus was giving him the clear way, but he could not accept it. Let us read the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 20. 
Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. No flesh will be justified by the deeds of the law in his sight. In the eyes of God, nobody can be justified by the deeds of the law. Nobody can go to heaven by the keeping the law. This is what the Bible is telling us. But why do you think that still there so many people they are still trying to keep the law to be justified? It is because they are still expecting themselves. So which way are we supposed to follow? Because if you keep reading the Bible, now the Bible clearly tells us that there is another way. We can read it, verse 21 to 22. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. Now here we can see that righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Now this is different from the righteousness of man. Yeah, righteousness of man, you know, that it is determined by the action of the people. Yeah, that's why there must be the good people, and there must be the evil people. Yeah, good people, they have good righteousness, and the evil people, they would not have the righteousness. That's why we can see there are a lot of differences. However, righteousness of God, you know, because through it is through faith in Jesus Christ. It is not, you know, up to you, but up to Jesus Christ. That is why you know, we, there is no difference. Every four years, we have what is called Olympic. You see that you know, these uh, the athletics, you know, the sports players, they are representing their countries. Suppose that there is a one, you know, the player who is representing Rwanda. If this player wins and get the gold medal, I'm sure that you know all Rwandese say that you know, oh, we Rwanda, we get this gold medal. Why? Because this sports player it is representing Rwanda. Jesus is representing all of us. Yes, Because he took all of our sins and he died at the cross on behalf of all of us. That's why the Bible says there is no difference. Dear viewers, I hope that you think deeply about this point. If you think deeply about this point, you will be able to realize that you are not able to be justified by the deeds of the law 
nibwo muzabona ko mutatsindishizwa n'imirimo myiza mukora you can only be justified by the works of Jesus Christ and when you believe in it you will be able to become the righteous ahubwo ni mwizera imirimo myiza Yesu yabakoreye nicyo giye muzatsindishizwa mukaba bakiranutse thank you very much i will speak up to here rakoze cyane ndasore zanu let us pray dusenge dear heavenly father we thank you you have given us this precious uh, evening. You allow all of us to meditate your word. So that this word may empower us. I believe that no, we, we are uh, saved by your, by your Lord and by your works. By the works of Jesus Christ, we are saved. Father, we thank you. I pray everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. See you next time.